good. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Great. It's so beautiful. And this, this, in answer to your question, this maybe we can say is the most beautiful thing ever created by a human being, this movement. I, I can't imagine anything more beautiful than this movement. You play it very, very beautifully. What's it's so interesting to think about is it's, it's a string quartet plus one instrument. And the string quartet plus one instrument usually means an extra viola. And in this case, it means an extra cello. And what that does is actually creates an orchestra. I don't think anybody's been ever tempted to turn this piece into an orchestral piece. It's not necessary. Right? It's already an orchestra, but with the two cellos, because it gives all the voices, uh, and it makes an amazing thing. Now, this, of course, like the first piece, where you, were, you were out of the room practicing. Of course, you always have to practice. But we had a wonderful discussion about Schubert in the early part of the class, which was Schubert is a songwriter, or he's always writing songs. And this is a perfect example. And in the middle of this incredible movement, we've only heard the first part up until the recapitulation, he tells a story of desperation and sadness. And what's happening here is the lovers have gone into a storm, a storm of the heart. Because in German literature, the description of nature is always the description of the inner life. So this is a real live storm. And what you did, you may not be aware of it, is take a completely different tempo for the storm than you did for the first part. Right? And that's very common. Most people do that. Schubert did not write it. I don't believe he, belie he meant to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to work a little bit on the storm and get that right, and then go back and see how we can find a tempo for the first part that is the same, because it, doesn't, it should, shouldn't really change. So let's start on the... And before we start, let's get the, the, the two lovers who are out on the windswept moor <coughs> expressing their love, the first cello and the first viola. So why don't you play alone first? Right from there. This figure, what is that? Is what? Sighing. Sighing. And this, what, what is this? What? It's reaching It's a cry of pain. Yeah. A cry of pain. So this is the most desperate song. And we know enough about Schubert songs to know how he does that. He does it with tearing out the heart whether it's old Koenig or all the... So now, you're, you're, at the moment, you're worried a little bit about playing together. Don't worry about playing. You're one person. You're a couple. Try together now again. Yeah. Imagine you the two lovers locked in an embrace, despairing. One, two, and The accent, huge accent. That's better. Yeah, exactly. 
And, and notice she uses her whole body to do that. Oh, tear your heart out. One more time, it's coming. More cello. That's one gesture. Not a ta di ra. Once again, and one. Right. Music, music, music is often built in threes. Right. So first one. The second one and the third one is the most. Do it one more time and build it in threes. We're beginning to get really upset about what's happening in our lives here. <laughs> and one. First time. Right, so. Second one, right? Once again, one. Beautiful. That's it. That's it. Bravo. So you, you, you go away on a vacation for a week sometime and just play that and play it and play it until, <laughs> until you sound like one voice. Now, these people go crazy. Let's add that before we add the cello, right? The storm. So, so start right from there, yes. And do... <clears throat> Only the first one has an accent. Is that right, how you have it? Yeah, just the first one. So now let's do it with the, with the, with the couple. So you're doing it at the beginning of the bar, right? And yeah, with the beat. Da ti ta to, it goes to there. Have a direction. That's great. Once again, one, two. <coughs>
so on. Bravo, bravo. Well done. Fantastic. Now we add. <laughs> as, if, as if that wasn't enough. All right. And you were great. You're really fantastic. I mean, the energy you produce is just fantastic. Now we're going to explode. Are you ready? Here we go. Oh, one, two, and roots. <laughs> yeah. You going to play? 29. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can do that, yeah. You're doing fabulously. So he goes, doesn't get too virtuosic and fast. But that's great. Okay. Try it a little bit. What? Oh, it doesn't matter. Right. But actually, down, down is great. Like Earl Koenig, you know, this is this crazed intensity. Oh, <laughs> Bravo. Now we've got the feeling of what that is. I mean, it's just people in the, in the audience listening are in despair. They're just wiped out with the intensity of it and the terror and the sadness and the heartbreak and the loss, the loss, the loss, tearing out. And it's such an incredible idea, this duet. It's a song between these two lovers who are facing death. You know. Now, how can we make that relate to the beginning? Because you realize that's a totally different tempo from how you did at the beginning. Now, what you did at the beginning was very interesting because it's what everybody does, which is that you turn it into several bars of three rather than one bar of 12. So it felt one, dum, 
papa, bum, papira. One, two, three, one. So let's see whether we can find a way of doing it so that it's the same, it's the same music. All right, so let's try from the three inner voices, not the second cello, but the three inner voices playing the beginning. So we got, oh, would you do one thing, which is play with your bow, the bass, so that we get the ha harmony, but no pizzicato. Right from the beginning, yeah, so, as if it was a string quartet. Never done this before, so do it again. Do it pianissimo, and I'll conduct it this way this time. Three, four, and one, That's in four, that's in 12 eight. not in three plus three plus three plus three, you got that? It's a completely yeah. different feeling. Now the question is, how can you make your pizzicatos seem as though they are bowed? You're doing really well and you can do it even more. So if you think of an E, as if you were bowing them. All right, so let's try that without the violin at first. Three, four, and yeah, they're not but
yourself in Cardiff. So that's, that's in the same tempo as the middle section. And it's in four, and we don't hear each bar. Now you are the soloist, and you're in despair because he's left and he's never going to come back. Don't try that. So Amy, Amy, every, every one of these statements, if you were singing them, they each have different words. different and you, you do them all the same so let's try three four one yeah can I suggest you imagine that inside yourself and then a little hope three four and Can I suggest something? Do me a favor. Come, come here. Come here. You, you come here. <laughs> come here. Right. Ready. Three. Uh, mm -hmm. once, once again. Here. Once again. Three. Three.
So that's the same tempo. It makes such a difference. It also gives you much more freedom. Isn't that right? You can play with that. And I think you're great, Ella. You're doing a really beautiful job. I think there's more you can do with the color of your pizzicatas to share, to sh guide the group in their timing and color. Well, the basic tempo could be a fraction faster, and then you'll see you can have, have a little bit more time, but it got a bit, bit slow again. Yes. Can, I, can I just do one thing with you? Just, just, would you? just let me see if I can do it. I haven't done this for, for 50 years, but let's try. If you play this at my funeral, which we already talked about, would you please play it at that tempo? That'd be great. Thank you very, very much, all of you. Beautiful, beautiful job. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Well done, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, so much. I have to say, I, I don't know any piece of music in the world. I mean. Beethoven, maybe, but, but I don't know any piece of music greater than that. It's as great as it's humanly possible for human beings to reach. And the incredible thing about Schubert, 31 years old, you know, he never heard this piece. It was written and disappeared, and it was, it was found in the top drawer of a closet. And somebody found it just lying in the, in the, in the shelf and said, what's this? And it was maybe the greatest piece of music ever written. Maybe, and, and we might never have found it. And it's just it's heartbreakingly beautiful and that we're privileged to play it and to sit in this room and listen to it. And it's just, oh, thank you two for coming, you three. These, these kids are gonna have music in their lives for the rest of their lives as a result of hearing this, isn't it amazing? So thank you all, it's been just a privilege this morning to be in the presence of great music with great players and deeply caring musicians makes all the difference. Thank you. Thank you.